Okay, tonight I think I'll start with this uh, longer talk, <clears throat> which is on uh, Chinese traditions uh, and Buddhism. Or another way you could say is talk about Chinese Buddhism. Uh, because uh, why I want to talk about this is that uh, a lot of people uh, cannot distinguish uh, between uh, Buddhism and Chinese custom or Taoism, which sometimes has crept into Buddhism. Uh, and also a lot of people cannot distinguish between a Buddhist temple and a Chinese temple or a Taoist temple. Why? Because sometimes you go into a Buddhist temple uh, and you go into a Taoist temple, you find the same gods are there. Kuan Yim is there, Kuan uh, Kong is there. Uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, this topic I think it interests a lot of uh, Chinese, la, Hua Chiao, <laughs> oh, she's Chinese, uh, like in Indonesia, uh, in, a, in a few. Uh, very soon uh, I'll be going to Indonesia and I'll be giving this talk, talk also. La. So first, uh, to understand uh, uh, this, uh, we have to know a bit about Chinese custom and tradition. In uh, Chinese culture, the family is the most important thing, uh, family. Uh, uh, this one thing is di different, makes us a bit different from Japanese. You look at Chinese and a Japanese, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> but uh, Japanese, uh, the country comes first. You'll die for their country. But for Chinese, uh, the family comes first. We're always concerned about the family. <laughs> so, uh, the individual uh, is not important. So sometimes, uh, <clears throat> we have to sacrifice. Sometimes a person has to sacrifice his uh, wants, uh, his uh, preferences uh, uh, for the family's sake. For example, arrange marriage. That's more common uh, during our parents' and grandparents' time. Sometimes they don't like to get married, uh, but the parents arrange for them and they just uh, follow. Now, because of the, 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 the Chinese tradition, uh, culture, the family also important, is also uh, responsible for all the family members. And the head of the... <coughs> Family uh, is the, always the male, the man. It's a pa pa patriarchal family system. Woman is less important. So, um, because um, they are fa the family is responsible for all the family members. Uh, that's why the children, the upbringing, etc., is the responsibility of the uh, parents. When I was young, sometimes, you know, a child goes to school uh, and does something wrong. Uh, it's came by the teacher. And when he goes home, uh, the, the, the news comes back to the parents. Uh, parents cane him again. <laughs> so last time uh, people were quite strict. Now, completely different. Sometimes the teacher canes the teacher. Uh, cane, the teacher canes the, the student. Uh, the parents go to the school and create a big fuss. Sometimes slap the teacher. <laughs> no. uh, so... So now, since the family is responsible for all the family members, uh, sometimes, you know, when one member of the family uh, does something wrong, some serious crime, uh, sometimes the whole family has to pay for it. To the extent, sometimes, uh, like the emperor, some somebody does wrong, uh, the emperor orders that person to be executed. Uh, not only he is executed, the whole family is executed. Yeah, uh, You all see Chinese shows now. <laughs> Uh, so, <clears throat> so from here I can understand uh, why our Chinese always talk about chung uh, ye, isn't it? Group karma. Uh, this is a Chinese concept. Uh, actually, a scrap into Buddhism, but Buddhism we don't talk about group karma. Uh, we talk about individual karma. Whatever you do, you are responsible for it. Uh, 
So later uh, you find uh, that this uh, concept, uh, this Chinese concept of group karma, <coughs> in, in, I mean, in uh, when it comes into Buddhism, they call it group karma. Also, crap into Taoism. How we crap into Taoism? In Taoism, uh, they say uh, <coughs> that uh, if you do something good, uh, it benefits the whole family uh, to the extent uh, that your later generations also benefit. <laughs> Uh, you do something good, uh, uh, later generations uh, will benefit. This is not what the Buddha taught. Uh, it is not a Buddhist concept. Maybe it's a Taoist concept. Uh, so that's why uh, you have to know some of these things. Uh, because sometimes it has come into Buddhism and we think the Buddha taught. Join karma and all this. Uh, also in Chinese culture, uh, they pray to a lot of gods also. Shangti, Ma Chu, Cheng Huang, Tu Ti Gong. Chai Sen, Guan Kong, uh, the kitchen god. Also. <laughs> uh, so they always pray yeah, for help uh, that the gods will uh, give them what they want. And also in Chinese culture, uh, you have mediums also, uh, just like we have Bomos. Uh, <laughs> they also have mediums uh, and will go into a trance and all these things. Uh, also, another thing uh, about Chinese culture uh, is ancestor worship is very important. Okay, we say Pai Kong Ma. <laughs> so this uh, ancestral worship uh, in the, in olden days, uh, every family uh, they would have a tablet in the house, uh, an altar. They put this uh, spirit tablet, San Ji Pai, Xin Chu Pai, and they always worship this uh, spirit tablet uh, as though your the ancestors live in that tablet. They'll offer food, they'll pray and all this thing. And sometimes talk to the tablet also. Uh, ask for some help. Uh. <laughs> Actually, uh, talking about this, sometimes people worship these things too much. Uh. Sometimes some spirits also go inside there because they like to be bowed to, <laughs> offered food and all that. That's what uh, I hear of some people's experience. So, three days in a year, uh, we the, this uh, ancestor worship uh, uh, is also uh, is, it turns into a turn into a big day. Uh. One is the Qingming uh, All Souls Day, where the whole family goes to the grave and uh, clean the grave and then offer food. Actually, offering food to the dead, uh, the Indians also do. But the Indians, after they offer food to the dead, uh, they burn it. But the Chinese, they offer food already, we take home and makan. <laughs> so we like to offer what we like to eat. <laughs> mm, so this generally now is on the April the 5th uh, in Malaysia. Second one is a ghost festival. That is the... Uh, 15 day of the 7 month, 7 lunar month. Uh, that time we believe that all the ghosts come out, uh, so we pray. Uh, another day is the last day of the lunar year, one day before the Chinese New Year. Uh, the 29th day or the 30th day of the 12th lunar month. Uh, uh, we think of our ancestors and we pray. So, this uh, ancestor worship, then filial piety, yeah? uh, respect and obedience to our parents, yeah? and to support our parents in the old age. Yeah? Yeah. And actually, our Chinese system uh, is also, we respect the, 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 the old man in the house, the uh, grandfather and all that nowadays uh, is... Very different. But last time, like in America, also uh, old days, when the, when they opened the Wild West and all that, when they sit down together, grandfather, everybody uh, sort of uh, acknowledge him. Uh, and China also formally. But nowadays, uh, the people don't care so much for old people. Uh, send them to the nursing home. <laughs> now, this. Uh, Chinese culture, uh, 
to have descendants also is a very big thing. If a man does not get married and have children, it's one of the biggest uh, offenses that he can do. Very important to have uh, children and grandchildren, uh, especially sons. Uh, <laughs> in the old days. Uh. I don't know how about nowadays, uh, but formerly, uh, if sometimes the family wealth is distributed, uh, sometimes they give only to the sons, don't give to the daughters. Uh. But funeral expenses, uh, doctors have to pay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not fair. <laughs> mm. So you see, uh, uh, this uh, need to have descendants uh, very, very important. Uh, and then funerals also in uh, Chinese tradition, uh, when somebody dies, all the family, these uh, funeral rituals, everything uh, have to be carried down. 